From NPR News, this is All Things Considered. I'm Robert Siegel. And I'm Melissa Block. With just under a week to go to the Florida primary, Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich continue to duke it out over who will win that big and important state. An estimated 2 million voters are expected to turn out for this Republican-only contest. Texas Congressman Ron Paul is polling in fourth place this week. He is not expecting a big win on Tuesday. In fact, he's not even competing there. He's back home in his home state today, and that's where I reached him earlier. Representative Paul, welcome to the program once again. Thank you. Good to be with you. This week's release of Mitt Romney's taxes and President Obama's advocacy of a millionaire's tax raised questions about fairness in funding the government. The first question, do you believe that income derived from dividends, interest, or capital gains should be taxed at a lower rate than income earned from a salary or commissions? Well, I'd like to have everybody tax at the same rate. And, of course, my goal is to get as close to zero as possible because there was a time in our history when we didn't have income taxes. But when government takes it upon themselves to do so much, you have to have a tax code. But if you're going to be the policeman of the world and run all these wars, you have to have a tax code. But as far as what the rate should be, I think uh, it should be as low as possible for everybody. But since we do have uh, a tax system, uh, you would say... Do away with the preferential rate for investment income? No, I wouldn't do away with it. I would just uh, realize that there are some problems with it. If you want it equitable, we should lower everybody's rate down to the investment rate. To 15% or so. Yeah, I mean, if the investment rate or the capital gains rate is 15 and somebody else is paying 30, I wouldn't go for equity by raising everybody to 30. I'd want to lower everybody to 15. Uh, You advocate auditing the Federal Reserve. If the Fed were closely audited and overseen by the Congress... Why wouldn't it be reasonable for us to expect that more direct political pressure on monetary policy to always produce lower interest rates? Can you imagine the Congress that would say, why don't you raise interest rates already? Why don't you make money tougher on people? (laughs) No, I think you're absolutely right. That's why I don't want that to happen, because indirectly that is the case. Presidents have put pressure on the Fed, and there's been statistics to show in election years, if you have a friendly Fed, they keep interest rates low. So you're right. I don't want the Congress dictating interest rates. I I want the market to dictate interest rates by savings. But doesn't the proposal to audit the Fed and to be able to get inside the workings of the Fed, doesn't that, in fact, increase congressional pressure on, on monetary policy? No, it can't be any worse than it is right now. But what it would put pressure on is find out how they spend $16 trillion, which they used during the crisis, which banks got benefited, which European banks got benefited, and which ones will in the future. Why should their budget be two or three times bigger than the congressional budget, and nobody knows what they're doing? Everyone else who's still in the Republican race can claim to have won a caucus or a primary, but you. What state can you point to down the road, uh, which you think as a sign of the viability of your candidacy, you can win and should win? I'm not going to do that because I haven't calculated, so we have to wait and see. The Iowa vote was a straw vote, and the delegate allocation hasn't yet been done, and I have a very good chance to do quite well out there. So we've only had two, and I will be working in the caucus states, to say that This means that I have no chance of gathering up an adequate number of of delegates is sort of jumping the gun. No, no, but what's an adequate number of delegates? As many as I can get. Well, More than than 10. (laughs) (laughs) But if you're in it to win, I mean, there are caucuses coming up in Nevada, Colorado, Minnesota, Maine, Missouri. Which of those states can you say, that's my heartland, I should do really well? I, I, I haven't even looked at them carefully enough. Somebody else worries about those kind of things. I just think that this thing is so up and down. Romney was up for a long time. Now he's down. Gingrich was down at the bottom, and now he's up. How many have come and gone? One thing you can't say about my campaign, I don't come and go. All I do is add. Last subject. Uh, when, when you've been asked about a third-party run, you always say you don't plan, intend, or want to do that. Let me put the question this way. After contesting the Republican primaries and caucuses, would it be honorable uh, to say, I didn't win, I'm going to take my marbles, go home, and run against the Republican candidate. Would it be honorable to Mm. do that? Yeah. I think it's total neutral. I don't think it's honor (laughs) one way or the other. But doesn't taking part in the the Republican process imply some loyalty to the Republican Party so that your rivals whom you're debating with all this time and running against, if one of them bests you and gets a lot more delegates, you support them? Well, what if the young people now decide that the Republican Party wants sound money and no wars? Would it be honorable for them to come and join us? 
Well, that would be their decision. My question is about you as a candidate. Would you go with them? In other words, if you felt there was a movement out there that might be as significant as there was for Ross Perot or George Wallace, you know, would you say, uh, I'm going to do it? You did it. You ran once before in 1988 as a libertarian. It sounds to me you're not taking it off the table is what it sounds like to me. Well, it's it's awfully premature because, uh, as you said, uh, you're waiting to find out <laughs> what state I'm going to win and how many. So we have a few months to go before I will need an answer question. Fair enough. Like that. One thing that the Republican or conservative pundits always remark on is they say that what's different now uh, from past cycles when you ran is that uh, your son, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, his future in the Republican Party might be jeopardized if if you were seen as disloyal to it. Is that a factor at all in your in your? Concern? Well, I don't think that's true. Uh, I don't think uh, they punish the next generation for something they think that I might have contributed to. Well, Representative Ron Paul, thank you very much for talking with us today. All right, thank you.